Site supervision in the construction industry is a corruption prone area. If the site supervisory staff is bribed, he may connive at or even cover up the use of substandard works by contractors, which may adversely affect the building's safety. This could greatly endanger the life of the users and the general public. Mr. Joe, can you take a look at the conduits over there? It's fine, I trust you guys. Uncle Chi says everything's based on trust, right? I'll visit the site every other week from now on. Everything's great. We watch each other's back, okay? Hidden works are those works that preempt checking after they have all been completed. Examples of the size and arrangement of the reinforcement bars after concreting. We saw Joe. The assistant clerk of works was supposed to check the conduits and properly documented it. However, he told the workers that the checks weren't needed as they were helping each other. Such lax site monitoring may be abused by unscrupulous contractors to cover up substandard works. To address corruption risks in site supervision, clients should enhance the accountability of supervisory staff by putting in place a quality site supervisory plan system and setting up the work items to be inspected, frequencies of inspection, rank of the inspecting staff and requiring the inspecting staff to maintain site inspection records for audit purposes. To ensure the quality site supervisory plan is followed by resident site staff, the client should arrange independent professional and technical staff to conduct technical audits when works are in progress. To further enhance the accountability of resident site staff, the consultant should require contractors to submit prior notices, such as request for inspection forms before commencement of works. In addition, the consultant should devise standard inspection checklists to record the inspection date, items, result and any relevant photos and require the inspection staff to sign the records after inspection. A good site supervisory system is useless in preventing corruption if it's not implemented at all. Uncle Chi, there's something wrong with the rivets and the hinges. We can't accept the windows. Just sign them off. No, I can't. Sign. <sighs> In this clip, Joe inspected the windows and found most of the rivets and hinges of the windows unacceptable. But he still signed off the acceptance form and the use of substandard materials. This is misconduct and is illegal. To minimize corruption risks faced by frontline staff, the supervisor should conduct supervisory checks on the inspection results carried out by the frontline staff. Also, unscrupulous contractors may employ other illicit ways to pass materials testing. Let's watch the following clip. I have no idea why they did that. Uncle Ming has left, so I come to notify you at once. How shall we handle this? There's nothing to handle. What? What do you mean? After the test, we submit to them our winning samples. We've always done it this way. Contractors will suffer heavy financial losses or delay if they have to rectify or retest any of their works, which often include substandard materials. Therefore, Unscrupulous contractors may employ improper means to ensure the materials pass the tests, such as swapping the reinforcement bar samples as we just saw. As far as possible, consultants should adopt unique identifiers on the test samples. 
This will help to enhance the traceability and identification of the test samples. Resident site staff should establish a system. A system can help prevent the contractors from using untested or failed materials in the construction works. They should also step up security measures on the storage and transportation of samples, which will help to prevent sample tampering. In fact, from the beginning, she used improper methods, step by step, to entrap the young Joe. Let's see now what he's done. Is your sister human? She tricks like a fish! Well, human or not, find out yourself and do your research tonight! <laughs> Assistant clerk of works Joe should not have accepted the lavish entertainment. Unscrupulous contractors may offer bribes, lavish and frequent entertainment to resident site staff or over-socialize with them, for example through activities such as high-stake gambling or karaoke. Their goal in doing so is to sweeten their relationship with them in return for their connivance at substandard materials or works. To raise the anti-corruption awareness of resident site staff and contractor staff, clients should include probity clauses in their consultancy agreements and construction contracts. They should forbid staff from offering, soliciting or accepting advantages and entertainment. All consultants and contractors should issue a code of conduct for their staff and clearly set out guidelines on the proper behavior for their staff, such as their anti-corruption stance, prohibition of offering, soliciting and accepting any advantages and entertainment, and guidelines on declaration of conflict of interest. So, let's go and see what happens to young Joe next in this clip. You're going to Shenzhen tomorrow. I got it all taken care of. Have fun tomorrow, okay? Have a drink. Mr. Kwan, are we supposed to do our work first? Mr. Joe, Uncle Chi has asked me to take you out for a good meal first. Work like checking the window frames. We have all day tomorrow. There's an awful lot to do. After dinner, the real fun begins. If you don't play hard, you can't work hard. When the assistant clerk of works, Joe, conducts inspection on prefabricated components outside Hong Kong. He accepts lavish meals from the manufacturer, Mr. Kwan. He also accepts escort services from Mr. Kwan. This may have already constituted bribery. Prefabricated components, such as precast facades, are commonly used in construction projects in Hong Kong. They are manufactured overseas before being transported. When they arrive in Hong Kong, they are assembled. Resident site staff and laboratory staff may need to check the manufacturing process of these items overseas. However, this makes them vulnerable to bribery by the manufacturers and contractors. They can be bribed to turn a blind eye or to accept the use of substandard components. To reduce corruption risk related to overseas inspections, consultants should have guidelines on inspection arrangements for resident site staff and laboratory staff, such as the standard of accommodation and transportation, and require all the inspecting staff to report to their supervisors when the standard is broken or exceeded. In addition, the entire number of inspecting officers and staff that adjoining the overseas inspection should be kept to a minimum to reduce the risk of corruption. The inspection arrangement and frequency should be stated in the site supervisory plan to facilitate monitoring. All overseas inspections must be pre-approved by the consultants. To avoid conflict of interest, all expenses incurred during inspections must be borne by clients, not contractors. The works consultants should also issue guidelines to require their inspection officers to declare any potential or actual conflict of interest and to prohibit them from accepting frequent or lavish entertainment from the contractors. So, have you made up your mind? This kind of popular flat will be gone in two days. <laughs> it's quite good, but shut in seems to be so far. Well, unless I have a car. Getting a car is easy. The site office needs new contract cars. I can get you one at a deal. 
In this clip, we saw Uncle Chi offer to sell a discounted contract car to Joe to win him over. The discount is an advantage under the Prevention of Bribery Ordinance. Acceptance may constitute bribery. In addition, according to a contract, contract cars should be used solely by resident site staff for conducting site inspection or for official duties. Using contract cars for private purposes, such as for picking up family members, violates the contract provisions. If falsified records are made on its use, this may be a criminal offence. To prevent the abuse of contract cars, one effective way is to enlist the public support in monitoring its use. This can be achieved by various means such as displaying the client's identity, the contract number and phrase for official use only on the doors. Also records on the usage of contract cars must be signed by the users and should be checked by the consultants regularly. Site staff should be prohibited from accepting any kind of advantages, including discounted contract cars from the contractors.